As 2021 comes to an end, the aviation industry was forced to contend with the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic and recession, which experts say is the worst since 1983. But as the industry recovers, it has also seen the commencement of plans by the Ministry of Aviation to concession for international airports, announcement of date for the setting up of a national carrier, acquisition of new aircraft by airlines, umpers of the NG Eagle and the Eero, politics of the bilateral agreement between the United Arab Emirates and Nigeria, among others. We will focus on these major highlights as it affected the industry this year. Welcome to Business Insight and Plus TV Africa. I am Justin Akadonye. Welcome back. President Mohamed Buhari has signed the 2022 Appropriation Bill of 17.126 trillion Naira into law. The President signed the national budget on Friday at the Council Chamber of the Presidential Villa in Abuja. The Appropriation Bill was presented to the President by his Senior Special Assistant Senate on National Assembly Matters, Senator Babajide Omowarari. While signing the budget, the President was flanked by the President of the Senate, Ahmed Lawan, and the Speaker of the House of Representatives, Femi Bajabiamila. The Minister of Finance, Budget and National Planning, Zainab Ahmed, also witnessed the signing of the budget. This comes a week after lawmakers in the House of Representatives and Senate Chambers of the National Assembly passed the budget of 17.126 trillion naira, increasing the benchmark price of crude from $57 to $62 per barrel. During the plenary on Wednesday last week, the Senate had passed the 2022 budget, while Senate President Lawan gave an assurance that the bill would be sent to the President for recent the following day. The federal government says it will complete 10 highways in the second quarter of 2022. It is eyeing Sukuk funding and Nigeria Labour Congress is lamenting rising costs of goods and has cautioned against fuel price increase. Those were some of the stories which made headlines in the last week of December. Take a look. About eight federal highways were completed by the federal government this year, while 10 others are projected for completion in the second quarter of 2022. It's been reported that five of the completed eight highways had already been inaugurated and handed over to various states and communities where the projects were located. The Minister of Works and Housing, Babatunde Fashola, recently stated that the Sukuk funding option which the federal government adopted was currently aiding the progress of work on 44 roads across the country. Nigeria and other emerging economies have to think twice before raising electricity tariffs as such steps will push inflation in 2022, World Bank has warned. In its latest commodity market outlook forecast, the World Bank indicated that the prices of electricity, which peaked at 80% higher this year compared to 2020, will remain high next year. It, however, said prices will start to decline in the the second half of the year as supply constraints ease. Amid currency crisis and fluctuation in oil prices, the country's gross foreign reserves dipped by nearly 600 million dollars in December alone. This raises fresh concern about the short to medium term stability of the foreign exchange market. The figure closed at $40.59 billion on December 22nd as against $41.19 billion, bringing the net gain within the period to minus $598.93 million. The last reported figure in the month as a press time minus $40.59 billion dollars was the lowest since October 18, 2021. Then the gross reserves figure was $40.39 billion. It remained in an upswing thereafter, reaching a recent all-time high of $41.82 billion on October 29th before it started a gradual but consistent decline.
Now, the relaxation of travel restrictions occasioned by the COVID-19 pandemic and increased economic activities during the year drove recovery in the aviation sector in the first nine months of 2021. Airlines and other allied companies contributed the most to the aviation sector. Between January and September this year, output in the sector rose to 146.6 billion naira from 114.2 billion naira recorded in the corresponding period of 2020. Now, joining us now to review the major highlight is the president of the S Transport Services Senior Staff Association of Nigeria, Atsen Elitras Amadu. Good afternoon to you, Elitras. Many thanks for joining us on Business Insight and Plus TV Africa. Uh, good afternoon, uh, Justin. Compliments of the season. Yeah, compliments of the season to you and Happy New Year in advance. All right, Elitras, let's just get uh, straight into the issue. 2021 was more like a year of recovery for the aviation sector, you know, having uh, witnessed uh, a tremendous downfall uh, in 2020 when uh, COVID-19 pandemic was just all over the world. And of course, um, the aviation sector was the hardest hit. But a bit of recovery, you know, was made and uh, there were uh, talks of um, concession and then, of course, uh, you know, bilateral service agreement. But in your opinion, what would you say was... Uh, the reason why we had a bit of a comeback this year? Well, uh, thank you, Justin. Um, I think uh, it's just about uh, the resilience of the Nigerian aviation industry. Uh, we've, got, uh, we've got a market. Uh, we've got uh, airlines that uh, have uh, uh, taken up the challenge of COVID and have decided to move on. And uh, with the current uh, um, situation in the country, um, the insecurity situation, the state of insecurity has uh, to a large extent uh, contributed a great deal to the increase in the passenger traffic we're seeing on the domestic scene. Um, uh, not much of the activities in the international scene on the part of uh, Nigerian carriers, because I can tell you uh, it's only air peace airlines uh, that is uh, active on the domestic uh, routes today in Nigeria. Most of the other players are on the international route, I mean my mistake. Most on the, of the other players are uh, largely domestic carriers for now. So, um, like I said, it's just a resilient market, uh, and uh, the the increase in the volume of traffic on the domestic scene is uh, mirrors the state of insecurity in the country, and a lot of people uh, would prefer to travel by air uh, this period in time. All right, Elitras, um, also this year, there were talks of, uh, you know, concessioning um, for um, um, airports in the country. This is not the first time that, uh, you know, the aviation ministry has um, talked about concession. You know, what do you see happening in 2022? Would we see a complete concessioning of um, these, um, you know, airports? Well, um, on the issue of concession, I think it's work in progress. Um, uh, you would recall that uh, there's been a lot of uh, issues connected with the concession of airports, particularly uh, labor issues uh, with regards to the entity fan workers who uh, would be directly involved in the concession. Uh, you, the government has uh, selected four airports, international airports, uh, for the concession, uh, but then the, the labor is of the view that uh, there are lots of issues that needs to be tidied up before we can go ahead to to key properly into the concession program of the federal government. Basically, um, um, workers are, are afraid of job losses. Uh, and what would happen to the entity fund after the four airports are concession. Uh, as I speak to you, um, uh, the unions are in discussion with the government, uh, uh, piloted by the 
Ministry of Aviation uh, with a view to addressing all the issues that have been raised so that uh, once uh, degree issues are addressed, uh, um, we will find uh, clear visibility on the issue. But you know, uh, they, they have, uh, the tenders have been uh, open. Uh, companies have uh, uh, indicated their interests, uh, be that the bids have opened and uh, uh, we are still awaiting uh, any response from the government with regards uh, uh, the next line of action. All right. Uh, also, in this um, year on the review, there was this impasse between, uh, you know, on the talk of um, the national career, there was this impasse between the NGE goal and the Euro, you know. But come 2022, what do we expect to see, you know, in terms of uh, Nigeria having its own national career? Well, uh, the, let me just speak briefly on the NGE goal issue. Um, actually, um, you know, AMCOM, uh, Arik Air is under receivership. And uh, as it is today, Arik had a robust operation, international and domestic. Uh, because of the huge debt portfolio of Arik at home and abroad, I think um, the airline had uh, concentrated on domestic operations in the time being. But I thought that the, the AMCOM, uh, having uh, reviewed the situation, thought it wise that uh, setting up another airline out of uh, Arik Air uh, in NG Eagle will, uh, will free it of any encumbrances uh, for the purpose of uh, accessing international market and expanding the scope of the operations. Uh, the issue arose because uh, Arik Air is indebted to almost all the federal government agencies in aviation. Uh, we are talking about about 19 billion exposure to FAN. Uh, we are talking over 10 billion in ticket sales charge uh, to NCA, and uh, there's a, a dollar component uh, attached to it. So um, the issue is that what happens to all this money? They are public funds. They are monies that were appropriated over time by National Assembly as part of the budgets of the agencies. So what happens if NG Eagle comes on board? Uh, does it mean that uh, that would be end, the end of the issue? And that was why uh, some unions uh, went uh, road uh, challenging uh, praying that uh, the AOC of NG Eagle should not be released. But uh, I can assure you um, there have been a lot of interventions on that matter. The National Assembly has stepped in. Uh, there have been discussions between AMCON and the Civil Aviation Authority. Uh, of course, it's a public interest issue, and I think at the end of the day, the best decision uh, for the industry would be taken. To me, um, the coming of NG Eagle would add to the uh, service level in the industry. And of course, if NG Eagle flies, um, the, the, it will increase the in terms of yield, uh, uh, the revenue generation for all the aviation agencies. But I, I thought it is important that uh, AMCOM and the federal government should sit and, uh, and agree on uh, what would be done uh, with regards to the death of ARI uh, so that this issue would be put behind us because we can't afford to continue to keep airplanes that have been branded in the name of NG Eagle on ground for over two years. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's not good for our industry, and uh, it just it just shows that uh, we. Meanwhile, there is a lack of. Uh, uh, we have problem of that of adding, uh, fleet in the industry. So uh, I thought that uh, even Amcom should have looked at another option while uh, this matter is still ongoing of giving those airplanes on lease right. to other operators to use pending when this issue will be resolved.
You're still watching Business Insight and Plus TV Africa. We'll take a quick break and return with more. Stay with us. All right, before we wrap up now, um, Elitras, let's just uh, look at the prospect of um, the aviation sector for 2022 vis-a-vis -vis, uh, issues of um, bilateral um, service agreement. You, we know what happened in 2020 with the, uh, the United Arab Emirates. Uh, how do we you know, you know, ensure that uh, we get past through all of these challenges yeah. and ensure that um, you know, we have better agreement um, uh, going forward uh, in 2022? Well, I, I don't believe that the... the the current bilateral agreements are, are in any way faulty. They, they were signed based on the principle of reciprocity. You will recall in the last 15 years, uh, a lot of Nigerian airlines were flying all over Africa. Uh, the market in the West Coast was dominated by Nigerian air carriers. Um, almost all the airlines were flying to Accra, to Ghana, going to Dakar, going to uh, uh, Banjul, going to uh, all over West and Central Africa. Um, I thought that um, um, the buses, uh, the, 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 the problem that we are having now is because most of our airlines have gone aground. Uh, like I said, only air peace is now going international. Uh, so you can imagine all those designations are lying fallow. Uh, the issue is that while we do not have the capacity to consummate the bilateral uh, agreements uh, in terms of the designations and the frequencies are located there on that, uh, the foreign carriers are doing this. So to me, uh, it's, a, it's a home problem. It's a national issue we must address. That is to build strong airlines that are able to utilize the designations under the BASA and compete with uh, their foreign counterparts. All right. So um, to put it succinctly, uh, it is not true when this allegation that uh, uh, the BASA are skewed against the interests of Nigerian air carriers. The fact of the matter is that we have not been able to develop capacity to utilize ours. Uh, we've created a situation of excess load factor on the foreign carriers. It is our people who desire this air travel service, uh, air services. Should we stop the foreign carriers from coming on to ask for extra frequencies when actually we are not doing our own flights. And the fact of the matter is that the truth that is not being told is that the 21 frequencies to Emirates or the 14 frequencies to other BA, seven frequencies weekly to KLM and all those stuff, they are, they are aside the traditional BASA frequencies, there are commercial, the bulk of those frequencies are commercial agreement uh, frequencies, which the airlines, because our airlines are not doing their own uh, flights, we, we, we approve extra flights on commercial agreements. And the airlines pay royalties to Nigerian government on those extra flights. So would you prefer the, 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 the flight, the, 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 the routes to life follow. We are not making any revenue from Nigerian airlines that are designated on those routes. Mm -hmm. Yet foreign mm -hmm. airlines come and ask for um, extra frequencies to close the gap for the non-utilization of the, the designations by Nigerian air, airlines. And Nigeria is making money through royalties. Which situation is best for our country? Mm -hmm. I think we need to look deeply uh, in the current uh, state of our industry. Uh, there's this, this thing about airlines, one man, uh, uh, everybody wants to own uh, their own airline. Meanwhile, globally, all the big giants in the world are going into all forms of alliances, uh -huh. uh, mergers, uh, thereby becoming stronger. 
and uh, stronger players in the global market. So if we continue the way we are doing, unfortunately, uh, I, I think we'll lose out in the, mm -hmm. uh, we'll lose out of the business. All right, uh, we must say um, a very uh, big thank you to you. We have been, all right, we must say a very big thank you to you. We have been speaking with um, Elitras Amado. He is the president of AdSense, and we have been indeed, you know, reviewing the aviation sector for 2021. Many thanks once again, Elitras. Thank you, Justin. And uh, once again, Happy New Year in advance. Yeah, we wish you the same. Thank you. And that's the size of the show for this week. I am Justin Akadonye. We'll return again next time. Bye for now.